Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We've been making progress in multiple programs, the Uncrewed Lunar Surface Exploration Program, the Early Interplanet Probes Program, and the Crew Orbit Program. But I don't think we need to introduce any new elements for most of them, except for the first EVA. Our current pod does not allow for EVA, and so we are going to be needing something new. Now, I have previously mentioned, and I think this is going to be the general idea, that we are going to be using the Mark I cockpit, which seems to allow for EVAs. But I don't really like the look of the Mark I cockpit. Um, its functionality seems fine, but it doesn't quite have the look that I'm looking for. And so I've added some new parts. But it's a little bit difficult to determine whether I've got it all right. The goal is for these parts to be just the exact same thing as the Mark I cockpit. And uh, I thought about just replacing the model of the Mark I cockpit, like just deleting the original one and putting the new one in, um, and that would probably solve the problems. But that was probably a bad idea and I decided to make a parallel part and then try to copy all of the relevant configuration changes to it. And, you know, I've, I've looked at all the sections for this Mark I cockpit and tried to get everything on here, but it has not worked. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have to set that aside for now. This does have built-in RCS, but I'll show you what I was working on. So this, which I have just called Mark, for Mark 1, um, was the sort of mock-up using these tanks with hydrogen and oxygen and using the RZ-20s in the tail. These are the cryogenic engines with only 410 seconds ISP, but that's still better than we've got otherwise. And some jet engines and the whole nine yards, really, and a controller there. And so my intention was to replace this well landing gear would not not with the dinosaur cockpit i have no idea why the dinosaur cockpit is 970,000 either it only fits one person i mean obviously the mark 1 cockpit is a great deal compared to that anyway this is the crew cabin and mainly i wanted a flat bottom i didn't want the curved bottom of the mark 1 parts and so that was the idea and then i also made a tank for it And the goal is, oh, I need to, I guess I messed up on the node on the tail, but the goal is that they should be exactly the same as these. Wonder, hold on, I'm just going to slap it on here for a sec. It's, it may, may be just a little bit different, but basically the same idea, same dry mass, similar wet mass, that sort of thing. This one is probably all right. The liquid fuel fuselage probably can't go wrong with that but the cockpit if we take a look this has some visual acuity a star occultation navigation I mean the configurations put the crew report and telemetry analysis in here but it didn't put those other things and I have no idea where the heck those other things pop in and get added to that so yeah I haven't even seen those before but I mean, this uh, did get the communication, but it didn't get avionics. <laughs> so, hmm. Should be interesting. Um, uh, so I'll have to work on it in sandbox mode to get up to snuff and make sure that it's actually properly functional and equivalent to this. The idea, the general idea was sort of a mix between the Gemini cabin and the dinosaur and hopefully we have an actual functional hatch there so that they can EVA out of that. The configurations for these things is, are just they're all over the place let me put it that way. Anyway so that's coming up hopefully. Alright so at ELA4 we're going to begin the construction of three new geostationary satellites that hopefully we'll be able to communicate with our spacecraft in orbit as they await a transfer and we are using UHF band 40 decibel meters tech level 3 and the range of solar panels hopefully that'll be enough 
and we will place them in geostationary orbit. It seems like there'll be enough. I mean, obviously, I did try to take a look. Oh, we really don't need the infrared radiometry on board. I'll get rid of that. Okay, so yeah, antenna planning, not on that, on here. Actually, for some reason, sometimes the communication section just disappears on the avionics. I don't know why. There isn't one right now. So yeah, 50,000 kilometers. It looks like only with another UHF 40 decibel meter thing will it be able to communicate. At 30, it's no connection. Well, that's a high requirement, but we'll try for that. We're also going to start construction of our rendezvous and docking target for our crewed vessels, and this is it, the Ariana docking target, launching on an Ariana 1. We haven't seen one of these before uh, for a while, and we're constructing it on ELA 2. We really don't need much more since it's just going to lower forbid and hang out, so uh, it does have the communications beefed up so that it can communicate to the eventual geostationary satellites if we need to, so it's got all that business and it's got the interplanetary avionics three tons of control even though we don't need that because we've only tooled three tons of control here I don't want to tool a new one so we might as well use the same controller and uh, we've got some fuel that's an under underutilized tank because we don't need to fully utilize it since again that's hanging out in low earth orbit anyway um, maybe we can pump it up to at least one ton I think this controller is still a 10 ton controller, or is it? Yes, it's a 10 ton controller. Okay, so we'll have some of that, and we shouldn't need to tool anything. We don't. It says unlock cost, so I'm wondering what that's about. Oh, the docking port. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, fair enough. We'll be needing that anyway. So we're building one of those. But we'll need to move some staff over to the old pad here. Well, we'll need to fix up the Dionysus so that I can do the docking, I think. We'll have the docking port on the tail, on the service module, rather than on the nose. So we don't have to change the pod any. Okay, so I've adjusted the stage here so that there's less fuel for the Viking engine and more fuel for what is now the Larches. We've converted them from the Gamma 2 to the Larch, and so hopefully that'll help out. We, we will try to limit the thrust weight ratio there. Here we'll max out at 5.6. Still not great, but um, we'll work with it for now. And now we have a docking port here, and instead of two kilonewton, uh, the 3.6 kilonewton thruster, I guess it is. Uh, we are using uh, just uh, four of these guys, and that's more thrust than we had before. We're still using HTP because the pod uses HTP, and it just seemed more convenient to use the same fuel that the pod is already using for its RCS. And we've got, you know, full docking RCS arrangement and all that business, so hopefully it will work out for us. But we will see. It is a propellant only docking port anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's docking down here. Um, we wouldn't be able to send crew through it anyway. So that is the idea. Alright, and those edits are due to take five days, so that's not too long. In fact, I don't think we have a Kerbal ready to go for this mission anyway. They are going to take until June 15th for their proficiency there. The main struggle is getting these Kerbals ready to go for another mission, really. Well, the next thing we're going to do is try to land on the moon, since we don't have any Kerbals ready, and we're still building the docking target and the geostationary satellites. They're all still being built there. Um, I don't know how long they'll last once we launch them, but we'll give it a go. Anyway, so on to the moon again. Okay, here we go for the moon landing again. SAS on, S SAS on, uh, throttle is working, and ignition. And we have one engine loss. Um, we'll roll it back. We'll roll it back. 
We'll try that again. I've really had enough of the engine losses on this moon landing sort of stint. We keep losing engines. We'll have to pay attention to our Mars mission, our Mars flyby mission, while this is rolling back out again. Seems like it's actually still properly pointed at the sun and everything around here. Very nice. Incidentally, I already took the liberty of fixing up the new spacecraft and I've got the avionics on it and also the experiments, so I figured out which configurations had that sort of thing. And so we're closer to getting it to the Mark 1 cockpit. Okay, well, that's what I wanted. Um, more or less, close enough. But we're about to turn back towards the sun, so... Okay, that's all set for now. And we'll add the SOI change. Okay, we'll pay attention to this again in 133 days. Okay, can we actually land on the moon now, please? Throttle up, SAS on. Ignition and launch. We're through the clouds and past the speed of sound. Okay, booster set and stage set and fairing set. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, and shut down at 258 and 227, and we're pretty much in line with the moon. No problems. Plenty to spare, of course. The launcher is a little bit OP for this. And let's just separate at this point. Sort of like to be close to Sadish Dawan for the comms. Maybe we can wait an extra orbit. Yeah, I think it's so close that we might as well just wait one more orbit. Let the communications come to us. And ignition. Okay, a little bit too much there. But still crashing into it, so it's more or less what we want. We want to crash that decisively. Hmm. I'd rather lean towards the daylight side if possible. I don't know if it'll be more daylight when we get there. I doubt it. Okay, well, let's separate. It'll be pending uh, communication and lighting review, but we'll go for something like that for now. Okay, how does that look? Uh, that seems a little bit not facing Earth. I think I'll take the dark. Uh, we're uh, definitely trying to stay in communication here, so we will eschew the daylight if necessary. That seems like it'll be okay for comms. We're like heading right north of that Looney Zero and that Lunar Orbiter too. Okay, ignition. Okay, that was too early again. Let's wait. Again, I can't completely trust the suicide burn countdown because we have another stage to deal with. Basically, when this stage finishes, we would like the time to impact to be, well, definitely not more than 2 minutes and 46 seconds, but not a whole lot less. If this doesn't work this time, I'll definitely aim to get into orbit and then land. I am certainly more used to that. Okay, end of this stage. And... Okay, let's wait that 18 seconds. 
Okay, with a little bit of leeway. Uh, let me remember what happened before with that leeway. Okay. Oh no, it's tight again. No. Oh no. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Done residuals. We just need, like, those balloons that they used for Luna 9, you see. Okay, okay. Okay, we sent all the science. And we fulfilled the contract. All right. It wasn't graceful, but it worked. Back to Space Center. The only thing we have left to do is the first far side lunar landing, and of course we're going to need to have a communication network around the moon for that to work out. So we're going to have to launch some commsats, commsats over there first. We're at peak funding right now though. We have passed peak funding for the early inner planet probes, unfortunately. But yeah, should be fine hopefully. We have a few windows to look forward to, but not too many. You have to watch out for that. We just got improved communications, so we could get an upgrade to our tracking station. I guess we might as well. But it's, it's expensive. Hmm. There's the R&D building as well. We've been clearing up the research department, though, so maybe we don't need to rush on that. We've got some extra science hanging out, though. Really, the main thing is getting our comms, all, all our satellites to talk to each other, not the ground stations. The ground stations are doing fine. Oh, we've got 350 applicants. Let's get a few more engineers first. Okay, so this is the launch of one of our new geostationary satellites. We don't have any comsat payload to worry about. No contract associated with this, we just need to make sure to place it and hope that house of communications. So with that ignition, uh, we have one engine out and without boosters that can't happen. Great, these Vikings, I swear, they were more reliable before we got new technology. <laughs> Did they get less reliable as we get more technology? Is this something like that? Okay, let's try this again. If these work out, then we'll use them for the moon as well. They should have enough delta V to get to the moon and make orbit. Throttle up, SAS is on. <clears throat> Ignition. And launch. Oh, we've got loss of performance. Uh, same specific impulse, it's just thrust, so that's not as much of a problem. But yeah, continuing to have problems with them, these engines. There isn't even a volcano in the tech tree, apparently. So we're stuck with these, basically. Okay, separation. Bearings. Okay, staging. Three larches, or larch twos. And shut down, 319 by 181. And... That's more thrusters than I was expecting there. Okay, separation. We don't have to be picky about our geostationary orbit. 
But as with the previous geostationary satellite launches, I think we'll wait one orbit so that we can use Kano properly as our comm site. And ignition. Okay, separation and ignition. I mean, we could have a bunch of satellites lower. Geostationary is a little bit far away. Requires the antennae to have more power. This has lots of extra delta V. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, we're probably a little bit late actually. Ignition. Yeah, I'm not really getting the inclination close to zero or anything. And, you know, we're going to end up turning anyway. We'll try and get it close to the right period, but just as I turn, it increases by a minute anyway. Yeah, well, okay. It has decided that that is the period that it will go with. We're spinning. And I'm shutting down the avionics. Okay, well, it's certainly recharging, and it should work for quite a while. But will it actually provide us with good communication relays? Well, we will find out. One other thing I have to fix for my... for my spacecraft, the special one that I made, is it has to... Oh, I think I've made... Oh, no, there's Proto Space Plane has to be here. Yeah, okay, it's here. All right, I added it to the proficiency, the proto space plane proficiency, because that's where the Mark 1 cockpit is. And you can see the Maya spacecraft crew cabin. That's just, that's the one I made. So, okay, well, that proficiency should work with my new part. So that's good. But we're really waiting for our Kerbals to finish training here. Viola will be ready by April 30th. I think we're going to do the rendezvous and docking in the next episode. We'll need to train her for the mission, too, so... And then she'll finish the mission training by July 7th. Uh, any way we can f speed this sort of thing up? The training part? Can we get them to cram school or something? I'd hate to see what training for the moon is going to be like. I'll get the tracking station upgrade. Let's see, we probably have some unlocks to deal with. Comms level 4. Solar panel tech. The MLI layers, well I better get them now before I forget. Fiberglass fairings. I guess so. Yeah, well, we're still waiting for Viola to finish training and those two to finish training. I won't launch the target yet. We'll just launch another Geosat to finish up this episode. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, ignition. And we've lost another engine. Fine, fine. Um, roll back. Okay, let's try that again. Uh, it is dusk, but that seems like a good idea anyway. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. Definitely past the speed of sound. And staging. Bearing set. Staging. Okay, shut down. And we can just separate. Oh, too many thrusters. Oh, uh, well, we'll be fine. Well, let's see. Where is the other one? The other one's there, so... It'll totally be in the same place when we get there. Uh, we'll we'll wait 
in orbit before circularizing then. Okay, go. I probably should visit the intermittent ones. Oh, we're looking at them cause sort of a wave function collapse and then they'll just stop working entirely. I don't know. Got two of them that blinked on and off. Okay, staging. Okay, we will wait. Ten and a half hour gap. Not exactly what we want, but you know. Okay, ignition. Well, overall, this seems like a good place for it. Okay, this one I've got reasonably geostationary here. That's the correct timing. And the solar panels are recharging us. And we will try to keep it this way. Okay, so two of them deployed, but really we want to get on to other things. Hopefully our uh, crewed missions will be ready to go. And we can launch the target and at least do the rendezvous. Of course, we'll have to pick up the docking separately. We'll have to pay attention to our Mars flyby again. And we'll see what else we can do. But with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.